Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to look at the GoTo Mark X Portable Photographic Platform. Uh, these came out in 1976 and they are very, very popular in Japan. Uh, almost unknown in the United States, of course, but uh, quite well renowned in, in Japan. And this is a small portable or semi portable mount. You could buy it in different configurations. It could be arranged in several different ways. Here's just a couple of them. I'll be showing you quite a few more. And there are a lot of accessories that you could get, including a guide scope and so forth. So there's a lot to be said about this interesting portable photographic platform. Let's have a look at these two configurations. Both of these are designed for use uh, using a small, short camera lens, like a 50 millimeter or something like that. Maybe a 135, something like that at the longest. Uh, this one here has doesn't have a clock drive, so you're going to drive this by hand. And the way it's set up is you have a guide scope here. This is a cute, a charming little original GoTo guide scope on the a little offsetting kind of a mount here. So you've got your camera, which is on a fairly standard ball head. You can aim the camera anywhere. The mount uh, has a polar scope through here, so you can polar align it very precisely. You don't really have a declination. You do have some limited control about where you aim this thing in terms of right ascension. But really, you don't need it with the ball head and with this little uh, outfit here. This is completely captivating. I'll have to show you some close-ups of how all this works. So that's one way you could do things, and you'd hand track. There's another way you can do things, and that's with a clock drive, and maybe even shoot two cameras. Now, this clock drive is not original GoTo. It's a uh, Vixen aftermarket designed to fit on this mount. Nice little uh, quartz driver, does just fine. It'll certainly work perfectly well for some 15-20 uh, minute exposures with uh, a wide angle lens of some sort. You've got a similar kind of a setup here. By the way, this is not, this plate is not original. This one's original, but this one is one of my duplicates. Um, a ball head, you know, you can aim it anywhere you want. Same kind of thing over here with the pan head. Uh, and then you polar align the scope, put it on there. You don't have anything to guide through, so you just drive the thing with the clock drive. Hope for the best. You could also, of course, interchange and use the motor with this and then guide. Make sure that you're careful with your guide star, watching your guide star, and use the clock drive to correct the tracking. This is not a commercial product. This is something I made in my shop. Take a couple of uh, hunks of aluminum, drill and tap them, put a counterweight down here, and put a ball head up on the top. You're all set. The only thing I'm sure you got with the kit was this, the MX-1 right ascension head and the plate. I'm sure you got those two things. Not even sure if you got a slow motion knob. I don't know, it's shown with a couple of ball heads, but I'm not sure if those came with the kit or not. For comparison, here's what it looks like with the declination axis on it. In this case, it's got a tube clamp for a 65 millimeter scope. The guide scope has a draw tube like so, so you can either use it straight through, all the way out here, or up in here somewhere with the star dive. That might be more common, probably. Now let me show you how this guide scope works. This is a standard ball head over here. This is kind of an interesting... You can um, change it like so. There's a lock down here. That locks down like that. And then you've got this to lock it in this motion, lock it down. And when you have it locked in that motion, you have a little bit of fine control here. This little lever arm is pushing back and forth in there against a spring. Your little fine adjustment control there. Let me show you a close up of the motion on this thing.
push back and forth here. This is just pushing on a spring in there. Gives you a little bit of motion to center the guide scope. All of this stuff is modular, so this comes off. With those off, this whole top section can be removed. Now with this removed, we've got a couple of quarter inch 20 holes here. This can be mounted to any standard tripod. Now we don't have to carry all of this around. Now I have something very light and portable that I can take to a dark sky site. Very lightweight tripod lightweight head and so forth and I'm all set to go. For tracking I'm going to need either a motor or this and of course this is very lightweight so make sure it's all cinched down really good polar align it carefully and then when I'm tracking I'll be looking through here to track and I'll be moving with Moving the slow motion very carefully, very slowly. Gojo came out with the Mark X system in about 1976. And you can see that they were very innovative, or were they? This is something that had come out a couple of years before. This is from Takahashi TS40. Came out in 1974, 73, something like that. Just a few years before this. And uh, you can see that it does almost exactly the same thing. It's got a little equatorial mount. You can hand track it. You can guide with the guiding eyepiece. Here's your camera. You can pretty much position that any place you want. But uh, it's doing exactly the same thing, exactly the same function. However, this is a dedicated mount. This one is part of an integrated system. So. Uh, you could conceivably get this as part of a larger system that came with the whole Mark X outfit. The prices on these two things were very close to the same, just about 32,000 yen. So you could see that they were in very, very close competition here. Goto, Takahashi, head-to-head -head competition, fierce competition. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at the Goto Mark X portable photographic platform from the 1970s. Thank you for watching.